Welcome back everybody, my name is Owais and in this video we are going to be working with numbers in JavaScript. So working with numbers comes easily in JavaScript. We already done this. We created variables that put numbers in them. And like any other language, we have the notion of numeric variables. We have the notion of numeric literals. In this case, just the value 200 written in your code is a numeric literal. But if you are coming from another programming language and you are likely to be thinking what kind of number is this and what kind of variable is this? Is this an integer? Is this a floating point number? Or what kind of number is it? We don't have to ask those questions in JavaScript because internally all JavaScript numbers are 64-bit floating point numbers. So that's how they are stored under the hood. You don't concern yourself whether it's an integer or a small integer or a large integer or and so on. Now let's look at example. We're gonna go to JS file and here I'm going to create two variables var and let's just say num1 is equal to 5 and semicolon. Now this is the integer. Well JavaScript compiler will automatically detect that that's an integer because we don't have any codes around it. Now let's create another var num two is equal to let's say three and now what if we write this to the page document.write and we can say here num1 plus num2 and then add a semicolon now what it's going to do we will uh, add these three numbers so we will likely have a value uh, of eight okay but what if I create a var, let's say num3 is equal to quotation, double quotes, and type 5 in it, and then var num4 is equal to quotation, let's just type 5 as well. We forgot the semicolon, so make sure it's a semicolon. And now if we write on the page, let's just write it, document.write and let's just say num3 plus num4. Now what it's going to do? Well, basically the compiler will detect them as a string. So the value we will get would be 55. These are not numeric digits. I'm gonna save the file and let's look at the HTML file. I'm going to refresh it and now we have 8 in 55. I think we should make a space here so we can look at it. So we just type br and we need to concatenate it with plus and add that into the quotation and that should fix it. Let's save it and let's refresh the page and now for the first we have 8 and then we have 55 because these are not the number digits, right? Now, there are a few more scenarios that we have to talk about. So, let's say we change one of these num3 to a digit, integer value. And now, what do you think what it's going to do now? It's going to concatenate. It is still going to concatenate and we're going to get 55 as an, as an answer. Because this is a number and this is a string value and it cannot be added so it's going to automatically change this num3 to string and it will concatenate them let's save the file and we can refresh it and we can see that we got the same 55 as the answer now there is another scenario where you might be thinking let's just say uh, i'm going to change this to a alphabet okay we change this to a okay and now these two numbers are going to get concatenated. This is one string and that is an integer. Let's save it. We're going to refresh the page and it's going to get concatenated. But now let's look one more thing. If I'm trying to multiply 5 by this, then what we get? Let's just change this to asterisk and then save the file. And you know what? It's going to give us n a n. So uppercase n, lowercase a, and uppercase n. That means, it means not a number, okay? Let's save it, let's run it, and there you go. We got NAN, the JavaScript compiler telling us that this multiplication cannot be applied because one of them is not a number. Now, let's say we want to convert this num4 to a number. 
what I will do here is I will use a global method so we create another variable so I will say convert to number is equal to and I'm going to use a function named number n-u-m-b-e-r okay which basically converts the object to a number and now we are going to pass in the variable we want to convert so num4 and add semicolon here and now it will convert this num4 string value into a number now I'm gonna take you to the JavaScript documentation because I want to make sure that you keep studying the documentation because that's the only way you can learn and any language you want to learn you need to follow the job documentation of a particular language so JavaScript a global methods and let's search for that and we can go to JavaScript global reference that's fine and here we have this uh, a function number so which converts an object value to a number and like that these are very useful methods here such as string you can convert the numeric digit to a string and you can parse the integer and uh, let's say you pass it a string and which returns an integer that's what you're gonna use parse int parse float so float passes a string and returns a float point number so read these uh, documentation I would highly recommend if you want to be good because in the course we cannot really cover everything which is available in JavaScript but we cover the basic concept so you could go and learn the documentation and get better with JavaScript or any other program language I've done the full course on Java uh, that's doing very well a lot of people are liking that now there's few things in this video we look at uh, regarding a math object let me show you what is a math object do. so a math object let's just create another a variable first let's explain what is a math so the math object provides you properties and methods for uh, mathematical constants and functions uh, unlike other objects a math is not a constructor all properties and method of a math are static and can be called by using math as an object without even creating it so you don't have to create it with the new keyword now let's look at how we use it now let's say I'm gonna delete all of the these and let's just say we are going to add this a floating point let's just say 7 now we have a variable num3 which has 5.7 value and now with that I'm going to create another variable num4 is equal to and then we're going to use math dot round and then here we pass in num3 and then what it's going to do, I'll keep typing this colon but it's a semicolon okay so what it's going to do it's going to get the value from num3 which is 5.7 and then it's going to store that value to num4 but before it stores to num4 it is going to round it so the result we will get I'm just going to move this thing down I don't want to write another statement so instead of just making it here we can just print out uh, num4 so you guys could look at it and now let's save it we don't need these comments let's go back to the file and it's not writing for some reason I'm actually going to look at because the variable name is num4 and we typed a double n there now let's refresh it and there you go we got 6 instead of 5.7 so the round method on this math object is rounding the num3 value now I'm gonna give you an example of what can you build with a math object so for that we are going to delete few things here I'm going to change the value num4 to value and let's empty this and now I'm gonna take you to JavaScript documentation. I have this math object documentation open from w3schools.com and here we have all the methods uh, which is available in a math object. So we have ABS returns an absolute value and we looking for something like a random 
I want to generate some random numbers. Let's say you are building a game of a dice. So you need a dice functionality in your game. No matter what reason, but you need that, right? So how can you build that? Well, the random method returns a random number between 0 and 1. Now, let's go back and I'm going to change this to random. All right, and then here we change the value. Now let's save the file. I'm going to go to HTML document. Let's refresh it. So every time I refresh, I get a random number here. As you can see, I get the random number. So in dice, we need to have a six value. Either you get one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So to make it as a dice, what we can do, let's go back to the code. Now what I can do here, I can multiply this by six. Let's save the file and now let's see what we get. Now we're going to get 1.6, 1.5, and then 0 0.2, 5.9. Now we are getting one like a numeric digit before the decimal point. So let's find a way to bring that, let, let's find a way that you wanna get rid of these digits. You just wanna keep the numeric digit, okay? So we go back to the math object documentation and here I'm going to find something, a floor. Right, so it returns the value of x rounded down to its nearest integer. So let's uh, me tell you. Let's say it's a five point four. Now it's going to get rid of this five point uh, five and so on. These are digits. It's going to give us only four. Now we will use this math object dot floor and add parentheses and we can add parentheses here as well. Now let's save the file and then I'm going to refresh the page and now I can see I'm getting a numeric digit, not a floating point digit, okay? Now the dice has one to six, okay? So dice has like from digit one to six, but this uh, math.round gives us from zero to one. And sometimes you're going to get zero because if a value is zero point something, then it's going to, this floor method is going to get you the zero. Okay. So what we can do here, we can actually plus one to the final value. So what if I type plus one here and then I'm going to save this and let's refresh the page. And this time we're not going to get zero, but we are going to get a different integer value from one to six. I'm just going to try this to refresh the page a few times. There we go. So we got the six. So what it's doing, it's going to give us a value from one to five because we're multiplying it to six. And then we are uh, returning the lowest nearest value by the help of this floor method. So let's say we get 0 0.5 or something, right? Then this method will convert that to zero. And then once we get that zero, then it will be added as one. So even if we get, let's say five here, then still we will get six. So it we're adding one to it to get from one to six. So you got the game going on and you have like few images in the page. What do you want to do? You want to write this a method in a function and then call that function. So every time the function return, let's say if a function return two, then you can print out a different image which has a two dots on a dice. And if it returns four, then you can print out the image on the page with the four dots on it. So that's how you can create a dice game. And uh, we will do a full project uh, of game development in Java, JavaScript uh, once I finish the core development in JavaScript. So, yeah, that's the math object. And, uh, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. And I hope I gave you an idea. Just use this method. Read these document documentation. It's very important to learn any language. All right, so the next one we are going to learn about uh, strings and booleans.